Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to design isolated, continuous, and pile cap foundations in the STAD Foundation Advanced General Mode. Over the next series of videos, we will show you the complete workflow for assigning rigid foundation types to an overall foundation plan, including isolated footings, combined foundations, and pile cap foundations. We will also show you how to review your overall foundation plan for layout and schedules. STAT Foundation Advanced does have the ability to design combined footings for supports that are collinear. Through the design process, we will create a new combined footing job, and then we will specify all of our concrete and reinforcement parameters, along with the cover and soil requirements, our footing geometry, the column eccentricity, and the sliding and overturning factors. We will now create a new combined footing job for the supports that are beneath our brace frames for our overall structure, which would be supports number 5, 9, 8, and 12. While holding down your control key, go ahead and select each of these supports. Then over in our main navigator, we're going to expand our job setup group and create a new job. We're going to enter a job name of combined. The job type now will change to combined footings. We're going to use a US design code, the English unit system, and we're going to assign it to our selected supports. We're going to change the code version to the ACI 31811, and then we need to identify which load cases and load combinations we want to include in this type of design. And we'll go ahead and click the second icon from the left to include all load cases and load combinations in the design. Next, we're going to go ahead and click on the Create Job button. Then if we scroll our way down in the Data Input area, there is an additional thing that we need to do for continuous footings, and that's to define which supports belong to which footing. Again, supports being combined to a combined or continuous footing must be collinear, and you can have more than two supports, but they must all be in a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to deselect all of my footings and I'm going to select the two footings on the left hand side supports number five and supports number nine again I can hold down my control key to select those supports at the same time then I'm going to go ahead and click on the create from selected nodes button and you can see that now I've created my first strip footing I'm going to repeat this process again I unselect everything hold down my control key and select supports number eight and twelve and then again, I'm going to click Create from Selected Nodes. So now I've created two continuous footings in this job. And as I expand the Combined Footing Job folder, I can see that all the design parameters can now be set for these two footings. We will start our design parameters with our concrete and reinforcing area. And of course, I can resize all of these windows if I want. And here is where I'd enter the unit weight of my concrete my maximum and minimum bar spacing requirements, my material properties for my reinforcing steel and my concrete, and my minimum footing and maximum foot footing bar sizes for both the regular bars, the top bars, and also the pedestal. Again, I can set all of these parameters as a default, and that would be required if I wanted to use these for future jobs or if there was going to be other footings within this job that had very similar parameters, I could set it as a default to save myself some time a little bit later. Next, I'm going to specify the cover and soil properties. My pedestal clear cover, my footing clear cover, I'll go ahead and set that quantity equal to 3 inches. My unit weight of soil, I'm going to use 110 pounds a cubic foot, and you can change all of these units over here to your custom requirements. My soil bearing capacity will be 4 kips per square foot that's as requested by the geotechnical engineer for this project. The depth of the soil above the footing is 24 inches, inches and I'm going to have a fixed top here meaning that the top will be 2 feet below the surface and then the footing will grow down deeper if a thicker footing is required. I can enter a surcharge, a depth of water table, and my minimum percent contact area. 
Next, I can enter my footing geometry. Here I have two major options. I can calculate dimensions or set dimensions. So for this exercise, we're going to go ahead and say calculate dimensions, meaning that this is probably a new footing, and I'm going to allow the program to optimize it in all directions. Otherwise, I can always use set dimension, which might be particularly useful if you're investigating an existing foundation system where the dimensions are known. We can do a fixed overhang for the left or the right. I'll leave those set to no. And a fixed width, I'll leave that again set it to no. The minimum overhangs I can specify. And a minimum width, I'll go ahead and leave that set to 5 feet. I can enter my thickness and length requirements. And the increment at which I want the footing to grow by. Optimize footing size, I'm going to go ahead and leave that to yes and I'm going to set this as a default. Next we're going to go ahead and set up our column eccentricity. Now the unique thing about continuous footings is you are allowed to set up different eccentricity values for each support or each footing that's defined in this job, which is very convenient. So we're going to go ahead and say our footing on our left side that supports 5 and 9. We're going to leave those as concentric footings and leave the offset set to 0 inches. For footing number two, again, I do have some underground utilities that we're trying to avoid over here. So to make it easier for us, we'll go ahead and shift those footings over to the left. And we'll do that by one foot, which is the same that we had pushed over this spread footing as well. Lastly, we can go ahead and specify our sliding and our overturning factors. We can enter a coefficient of friction. We'll do that at 0.5 and a safety factor, again, sliding and overturning. At this point, we're ready to perform our design, so we'll go ahead and click on the Save button, and then we can invoke the design by clicking on the Design button. After the design is complete, we do have a summary table available with all the major relevant information, including footing size and reinforcement requirements. And this information is also available in the output pane that's at the bottom of your screen. We do have quick links to each of our foundation designs, and within those areas we'll see some calculations regarding how the footing size was calculated. We'll get the pressures at the four corners of the footings. We'll get the results of our stability checks, which will ensure that we are within our factors of safety against overturning and sliding. It'll be performing shear calculations, including punching shear and one-way shear in both directions. And it will design for flexure of the footing and also perform a pedestal design. Now, if we look through here, we can also see that the geometry will be updated, reflecting those um, column eccentricities that we had specified, which we had specified for footing number two. And here we can see that schematic diagram has been created. Now again, just as a reminder, for our designs for all of our footings, our service load checks will include all of our service load combinations. And this will be used to determine the overall geometry of your footing and also check against overturning and sliding. And then our ultimate load combinations will be used to check for shear and bending of our footing and also to perform our pedestal design. In addition to the results in the report, we can also select the detail and schedule drawing and we can see each of the footings within this model and we can see details on their pedestals. So here's our first continuous footing and I can use the pull down over here to select the other footing and here I can see all the information on each footing. Now I'm going to go ahead and save our model and again if I need to go back to any of my other footings that are defined for this overall foundation plan that we're working on, I can select those different jobs from our job pull down menu. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.